Well, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese will convene a meeting of National Cabinet this Wednesday to discuss plans to tackle what he called a national crisis of male violence against women. Joining us live now is our Monday morning panel of Liberal Senator Holly Hughes and the Assistant Defence Minister Matt Thistlethwaite. Good morning to you both. Matt, I'll start with you. Um, tensions are understandably high at the moment. People want answers that aren't coming fast enough. Now, it is a whole-of-government thing, but the Prime Minister was heckled at a rally in Canberra yesterday and the organiser has said this morning that he was abusing his power by lying. Did he fail to read the room? Morning, Pete. We know we need to do more um, as a government, as a society, to tackle violence against women. Uh, the Prime Minister was there yesterday to let the organisers and people know that we know we need to do more um, and, importantly, to listen, um, to listen to uh, particularly women in our society who are frustrated uh, with the shocking levels of violence uh, that have been perpetrated against them at the moment. We do have a national plan. Uh, it's a 10-year plan. It's a $2.3 billion investment in early intervention, in education, in legal and justice responses. Um, but we want to know that that funding is getting to the right organisations uh, and making a difference. And that's why the Prime Minister is convening a national cabinet on Wednesday to work with all levels of government um, to ensure that we do do a better job um, and that we do get better outcomes. OK, you just saw... Uh, Holly, to you now. You just saw that moment of frustration there from the Prime Minister when he was called out by the organiser of that rally. Um, what did you make, first of all? Was it fair that he was criticised or not? Seriously, is this not the definition of irony? He's supposed to be there listening to women and then fundamentally having a tantrum because he was heckled and then demanded to speak uh, after telling organisers he was there to just listen. I mean, this is just absolutely outrageous that at a time that we are seeing record levels of women being killed in domestic violence or misogynistic targeted attacks, for him to then turn up to a rally, the Prime Minister to turn up to a rally, say he's there to listen and then be caught on camera rolling his eyes, be accused by the organiser of lying during his speech. I mean, it is just without... I, I just cannot think of an example of anyone being more tone deaf than this Prime Minister. I honestly cannot believe this government, when they were in opposition, they never saw a royal commission they didn't love, to talk about $2.3 billion worth of spending over 10 years. That's not even half what they spent on the referendum per year on an issue that we've seen 27 women killed this year. Mm. And then organising another talk fest is not good enough. There are plenty of studies that have been done to look at what causes this. There has been plenty to look at what are the things that need to change. Yet, rather than any action, let's not forget here, we have Labor governments everywhere across this country except for Tasmania. If they all can't come together and work on something all being from the same colour, well, what hope have we got? OK, so uh, as you just pointed out there, as the Prime Minister pointed out yesterday and as Matt um, pointed out a little bit earlier, he singled out changes from the Jenkins report. He singled out the paid DV leave as well. And like Matt said, he admitted more work needs to be done. Mm. So there's been a whole lot of measures that are being considered at the moment. They're being talked about ankle bracelets, harsher penalties as well. Holly, before we go back to Matt, mm. what, what would you like to see? Look, I mean, DV leave, one of the biggest issues for women facing domestic violence is they're frightened to come forward. They're frightened of the situation that they're in. Uh, if it was just as simple as calling your boss and going, by the way, I was beaten last night, so I'm not coming in, that is just completely unrealistic to think that that's the way the situation's going to be solved. And again, it's looking at women and how they fix the problem. It's not women that are generally perpetrating these acts. It's not women that are killing former intimate partners or intimate partners. It's, it's men, overwhelmingly. More needs to be done to address the underlying misogyny that we're seeing. And the other problem I think we've got, we do need to look at this as a broad society. As a, as a straight white male, you are condemned at the moment, and we saw it in the Me Too movement, that 
all straight white men are some kind of demon mm. uh, and that all women should be believed. And, and it just simplified a very, very complex set of issues. So, so you're just on and that, I, yeah. yeah the, I, I that, mean, we, that, we cannot paint all yeah. men as perpetrators. We can't yeah, that's paint what I was going to ask. Yeah, all men but that, as... But just, just on that point, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. but that, that point, I know that that's been talked about too. I mean, is, are all men being grouped here because there's a lot yes. of, there's a lot of good blokes out there's there. There's some really good blokes out there. You know, my husband's a great bloke. I feel but, like I'm a you good know, bloke. <laughs> I'm sure both you and Matt are great blokes, you know, but there, there needs to be more done. I mean, my husband asked me what, you know, what did I think? And I said, you know, for the guys that go to the pub, that go to play golf together, and you know, the mate that might have a couple of beers and then get a bit angsty in the in the 19th hole or at the pub yeah. or whatever, that maybe his mates need to have a look at what he's like when he goes home to his family. Does sure. that continue? It's not, this is not an issue for women to solve. Blokes need to step up here sure. and be more engaged. Okay, so back to you, Matt. Um, by blokes stepping up, what, what would you like to see? I mean, just back to that point I made earlier, there's been discussions around ankle bracelets. Jane Hume brought this up a little bit earlier. There's even discussions about royal commissions, whether that be at a federal or a state level. Is that something you would support or is, or is that just going to delay the problems? Well, we do need to do more. Um, we do need to change the culture, and I, I agree with Polly in that respect, um, that the educational piece is very, very important. Uh, and the aim of the national plan is to try and change those attitudes within a generation. But if that's not working, then we need to hear firm advocacy groups um, and such organisations about how we do change the culture. Um, and a lot of the programs that the, the government has put in place, for instance, the 10 days uh, paid uh, domestic violence leave, um, the, the, the wage increases for, for industries that are predominantly women employees, such as aged care, those, those policy responses come about as a result of consultation with advocacy groups mm. um, and their requests and the government listening. Um, but we know, we know that, that, if that if those programs aren't working and we need to do more, then we'll do that in consultation um, with advocacy groups and importantly with the states and territories. And that's what mm. the National yep. Cabinet is about. There probably not, does not what were you were wearing if they don't give you the right speaking opportunity. Yeah. Um, we're out of time. 